And now time to refresh another thing in my house I've been staring at for way too long, my built-ins. We love our fireplace and the living room is our main hangout around the house. I love the split mantle I built over the fireplace, but there are a few problems with these bookshelves. For one, I have little kids and you can't have 10 open bookshelves with knickknacks and curios and whatnot at arm's level for a four and seven year old. Those are toys to them. Two, we need to hide some stuff. All these shelves just make the room look sloppy. And three, we need a splash of color in this grayish room. The start of any remodel is of course the demo, so I carefully removed all the trim off these built-ins to give myself a little less work in making this look finished at the end. Next, I started working on what would become the cabinets. I used MDF because everything else is worth its weight in gold for this project. It is great for painted projects like this that will never have any chance of coming into contact with water or humidity. I ripped a couple of pieces to become the dividers and two four inch strips that the countertop would eventually attach to. By the way, this miter station has been immensely helpful around the shop these last couple weeks. I made a video on that project as well. If you wanna check it out, it's at the link in the description. Once all the materials were cut to size, I drilled pocket holes to attach them to the carcass of the bookshelves. Everything was three quarter inch plywood on the bookshelves, so I used inch and a quarter screws to attach it. I also ripped some new pine trim to frame in some details that were missed when the piece was first constructed. I laid out for the MDF divider and attached it to what was the bottom shelf that now becomes structural by putting some two by fours under it. I attached the divider using a couple two inch screws into the two by fours I installed underneath. Once the divider was secure, I attached the two four inch strips to the top, ensuring the strips were level, as well as level with each other and square to the divider. This would ensure that everything is square when it all comes together, since this cabinet wouldn't really have a total face frame. I then repeated this on the second cabinet. Next, it was time to install a couple of trim boards on the top of the three quarter inch carcass. I didn't like the fluted trim with the medallions and whatnot that was there before. It was a bit too formal for my taste. I used a couple of sanded three quarter inch trim boards instead. They would still give a shadow line, but not as much visual noise as the fluted boards with the medallions. I measured and cut each of these individually to account for the inconsistencies in the floor and the ceiling. And then I attached them to the front of the three quarter inch carcass using inch and three quarter brad nails. On the outside edges, I did have to notch my trim board so that the face frame would slide into it so that it wouldn't sit on top of the frame and leave some extra unnecessary shadow lines. I also added, okay, I guess it's part of a face frame. This is the piece the barn door track would be installed on. This had to be a tight fit to the other trim boards, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This thing's gonna be painted after all, so I have a chance to patch it and putty it before I paint it. After installing all the trim and assembling the carcass of the lower cabinet, it was time to patch, prep, and sand to get ready for paint. You could hold off on this to the end, but this is the step where you're going to be have to do the least bit of masking and removing parts to get clean lines. Everything else is going to attach on top of this assembly, so I went ahead and knocked out all the painting. I threw up a few paint swatches for Wifey to analyze as I got to work. I really like the green we ended up going with for the field behind these shelves. It makes it look just formal enough while bringing in some color. If you were a bolder person than I, I think you could go with a cool crazy color behind here. It takes literally 20 minutes and a quart of paint to paint the field, so have a little fun. Next, it was time to attach all of the appropriate accoutrement to the cabinets. I got these mini barn door hardware kits off Amazon for like 45 bucks, and I think they bring a little industrial farmhouse vibe to the shelves. Just wait till you see what I do with that cabinet towards the fireplace, I'll show you at the end. But I did provide a link to this barn door hardware in the description below if you wanna check it out. The kit was super easy to install and came with all the appropriate stops and guides and hardware. All it took was leveling the rail and drilling three holes, threading a few bolts, and it's ready for doors. But oh yeah, I had to do that twice too. I really hope the second cabinet doesn't look way better than the first one since I got to practice everything in the first one before installing it on the second. After measuring for the doors, I cut down a couple of half inch project panels into some super simple shaker or craftsman style cabinet doors. The way I'm building these is a huge time saver for these types of doors, and since they're made out of all MDF and just going to be painted anyway, I literally just cut the doors and CA glued some strip to them to make them have that shaker panel door style. You could also do the diagonal support to make them look like barn doors or whatever. They're just super quick. A little sanding and painting it took maybe an hour to knock out four doors.
After the doors were patched up and sanded up, I prepped the old shelves by painting and cleaning them up. I didn't want to buy whole new three quarter inch plywood with prices right now, so the shelves are a little bit short, but they, they fit fine. And with the thicker trim piece, they actually end up fitting pretty much perfect. I cut some two inch pieces of pine to attach to the front of the shelves to make them look like they were actually integrated, even though they were adjustable. I knocked down any of the roughness on any of the pieces with some 220 sandpaper, and then I gave everything two coats with some enamel paint. I let everything cure overnight so that I could install it without scuffing anything. Enamel paint, in my experience, tends to be just a little bit easier to mar and scuff if it's not fully dry. Since I wanted it to look like all the shelves were face framed in, I carefully cut the two strips of pine that would be installed in place. I cut them to several different dimensions to fit within the two rails, which of course weren't perfectly parallel. After hanging all of the trim, I quickly hung the cabinet doors and got to work on the countertop. I have this piece of white oak slab sitting around my shop for really too long now, and it's time to do something with it. It was too warped to use as a single live edge slab, so I decided to mill it up and make some panels to use for the countertops in this project. It was too heavy to keep bringing back and forth to the bandsaw, so I put it down on a couple sheets of foam and milled it with the track saw, which wasn't great, but worked out fine. The cuts weren't perfectly square, so I left some wiggle room on the dimensions that I could address later in the milling process. After cutting two square-ish edges, I worked on just ripping thin strips off each edge to get rid of the bark line. And then I ripped it into, I believe they were inch and a half uh, rough strips that I could then mill down to their finished dimensions that I would then join together with some dominoes uh, for alignment and glue up into a wider panel. I cut some dominoes in the stock for alignment and glued up a couple of gorgeous white oak panels. And after letting the glue dry overnight, I put them back through the planer, cut some notches so they would fit within the trim, and put a nice round over on the front edge. Sanded to a nice 220 finish and finished with some teak oil before installing. Keep it classy. I want to take a minute here while the glue dries to thank a new sponsor of the channel. Buyers Lumber is right here in St. Louis. They're a fourth generation family owned lumber yard, and I've bought all of my cedar from them over the past couple of projects like the pergola and the raised planters. We're we'll working together on a really cool project pretty soon here, so stay tuned for updates on that and check out buyerslumber.com if you're local here in Missouri for your next project. While the countertop dried, I soldered together some LED strips into accent lighting that I would use on each of the shelves. I also connected them to a dimmer so that I could set the light just how I liked it. And you may be asking yourself, what's it going to use that cabinet closest to the fireplace for? Well, I'm actually going to use it for firewood, but a funny story, it actually ended up being 11 and a half inches deep, so uh, yeah. Anyways, it's just going to be a decorative space anyway. I'll probably use some of these logs to start fires occasionally, but I don't mind running out to the shop and trimming them down to 11 and a half inches so that they look nice all the time in the shop. But I love the way these shelves turned out. One of the first projects I did as Woodwork Life was to build a built-in for my dad, so I'm glad I'm finally able to build a built-in of my own. I don't have any plans for this project, but if you check out woodworklife.com, I've got a bunch of plans on there for a bunch of projects I've made in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drop us a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and remember, keep your tools sharp and your mind sharper.